I'm going to take you through a quick timeline of that incredibly, uh, I, I, I hesitate to call it magnificent because in a sense it is beautiful, but in a sense it is terrible all, all the same. So I want to walk you through some of the timeline of this storm. If we go back to around 630 this evening, um, we had a tornado warning at the time uh, across parts of our viewing area here. Uh, this was just into Poinsett County. Uh, we could not quite see it on uh, the on the on excuse me, on the debris detector just yet, but if you forgive me a moment as I switch it over to uh, the velocity, sh uh, we can see where that storm was rotating. So here we see right around that I-555 connection from Truman, Arkansas. So this is in Poinsett County. We had a tornado warning at the time, and I believe, Trevor, at the time we had already confirmed it around 620. So this was already a confirmed tornado, and it was approaching 555. As it did, uh, we we started to monitor some of those DOT cameras and we could see that this storm was rapidly intensifying. Let's take a look at the first video of the uh, Arkansas DOT camera here. You can see in the upper right corner of this or upper left corner, excuse me, of the screen. If we could drop back that, there we go. Uh, you can see just that thin, thin little dark sliver. That is a rope tornado. That's sometimes an early phase of a tornado's development, a very narrow tornado uh, that was about to cross over I-555. It was only here on ABC 24 that you could see that. And then of course, later on, uh, it, it started to sort of become obscured. We couldn't quite see it. And then after it had crossed the interstate, you could see a large cone tornado was in progress, illuminated by a single flash of lightning. We appreciate our editors who captured this and got that video uh, available for us as well. So that was the confirmation that we had a tornado and that it was going to be a long, however long it took before this blew out. Let's head back to radar now as this storm, of course, crossing over I-555 just after that frame of that uh, of that still image that we saw. We then zoomed in. We kept an eye on it because we knew a tornado was on the ground in Bay, Arkansas. We've had reports of damage from that tornado. You can start to see the development of a debris ball. And the very next sign of that is this. Whenever we're talking about possible debris, the purple shade, that is rain only. Radar has two beams, a vertical and a horizontal, and that detects how, how uh, large the object is in the vertical and in the horizontal. And if there, it's the same, either side that's likely rain because rain is spherical it's a little droplet so we have very high correlation but once you get debris from a tornado that continued to move towards the lake city again this is not live this was 6 38 p.m um, we started to see tree limbs dust rocks pebbles possibly uh, debris from houses that may have gotten hit from that tornado as well. Of course, we're uncertain of what was there and what it did hit, but that debris was getting lofted by the tornado and continued on to Lake City. So as we move this forward, that tornado continued on the ground, uh, at least threading between Needham and Lake City, though there are some uh, reports of that tornado being absolutely massive around this time. I want to show you what the velocity looks like at that time. One thing was happening here, uh, whenever we talk about the greens, the greens usually come into a bright blue. Instead, this wrapped around to the other end of the scale, back into the higher end of the yellow to orange. So this is what's called range folding, where we had so much fast, fast winds, fast rotation within the storm that it basically thought it was going the opposite direction. It's, it's a, a product of just radar. Sometimes it's a, a paradox that happens that uh, it's tar uh, it's tough to prevent, but this is when we had that first video that we were looking at. Of course, we have that hook echo, that classic shape of a supercell, and let's get that video of that tornado um, behind me here. Of course, we see this is that area that's where we were talking about the range folding, where the ra radar flipped the velocity. This is rotating so fast within the storm in the mid to upper 
upper levels that it is uh, that that was causing the radar to think it was going backwards. That translated down to the surface as a wedge tornado. It's wider than it is tall. That's the classic definition of a wedge tornado. If we could zoom in on this, there are some features with this storm uh, that you can see right there, some power flashes. So that was doing damages to power lines, something uh, with very violent characteristics. Notice here on this on this left side or the right side of this storm, there's these little bitty curls of uh, vortices that are happening. That is where the winds are coming in from the surface and getting lifted so quickly that you get this sort of this tube of wind that is rotating rapidly on that side. So that is a violent tornado creating all of these features that we know when we see this, it is a dire situation. Of course, we had to change our messaging very quickly. The National Weather Service upon this wedge tornado being reported issued a tornado emergency. You can see some more of those horizontal vortices on this uh, camera view once again. Of course, you see that tornado kind, kind of drops and it expands as it continues to progress. This is a violent tornado. There's, there's not many words to describe it, but uh, anytime we see this, this is something that concerns us. I'll tell you, my gut kind of sank when I saw this on a live stream that we didn't have permission to use, but then we eventually got this. We do appreciate Matthew Frazier for sharing this video with us. Uh, this was an incredible storm. Uh, again, this was just outside of Lake City. And if we get back to radar, uh, I'll wrap things up with this uh, lesson here, of course. Um, we started to see that debris head towards the Leechville area around 648. That continued to move through into northwestern Mississippi County. And then we started to see some debris getting thrown out. So all of the debris from back there had started to fall out into the thunderstorm within that. Uh, sometimes you can actually see hail forming on uh, on straw and corn stalks. I've seen that in the Midwest before. It is a wild thing when debris gets lofted into the storm. That was about the time that the tornado emergency was canceled just after seven o'clock this evening. So uh, a long, long stretch. Uh, and this is what we've been talking about of a long track tornado. It went several miles. We just get a quick estimate on that. If I get my uh, measurement tool here from around I-55 to the boot heel, about 30 miles, possibly a little more, but that's just a quick estimate on our radar. Of course, the National Weather Service the next couple of days will be very busy with more warnings. In the next couple of weeks, they will be surveying this damage. Um, of course, our hearts go out to everyone who may have been impacted by this tornado and many other tornadoes. We've had, had other tornadoes around the area this evening, none quite so apparent as that one. 